Hello, College of the Desert students. Wendy Ansley here, kinesiology professor. We have a well-rounded flow today with postures that are going to give us so many gifts of alignment and form and beauty as we practice and move in this meaningful way. Uh, we will utilize the wall. I have my blocks. I have my strap. And for those of you, sometimes even a little blanket or sometimes a little pillow that might help you um, in the forward folds uh, towards the end of our practice. So as we get started today, I wanted to do a little exercise with you, a little meditation and reflection. It's called Let the Good In. Health psychologists tell us that the most important conversation that we can have is the one with ourselves and it can impact our day, can help our relationships with others, right? And it can just lead us to more of a fruitful life. So as we take a few moments to cultivate the good within us, right? Let's simply maybe sit to whatever is comfortable to you. Draw the hands heart-centered. Let's close those eyes and connect to the power of the heart. And as we connect to the power of the heart, I want you to take inventory and think of, reflect upon some of your good strengths, your talents, or your good qualities. Maybe you're good at your job right now. Maybe you are a good listener. Maybe you're good at math. Maybe you're good at writing. Or perhaps that's your qualities. Maybe you're good at being patient and kind. Maybe you're good at encouraging others. Take a few moments and breathe into these good qualities, these gifts that you have. Let the goodness seep throughout the bloodstream. Throughout the heart, the mind, the spirit. Let the good overflow and flow within us. Let the good nourish our light and gently look up. Let the good continue to flow in our practice, flow off the mat today. There's good within each one of us. We want to honor, we want to own the good, we want to cultivate the good, share the good, share the light. Here we're going to get started on uh, the back here on our back and we're gonna draw the knees towards the chest. This is also known as a supine forward fold. And we're gonna lightly clasp around the shins and just think about drawing length in the spine, both the right and the left side. This is known as apanasada, the wind relieving pose. We'll stay here a few breaths as we Inhale and exhale through the nose. Think of the tailbone coming towards the ground. Good. Mindfully, we're going to come into a lying down spinal twist. We're going to guide both knees to the right here. Good. We're going to stack them on top of one another, feet on top of one another. Let's place the right hand on the left knee and extend that left arm to the side where we 
gaze over that left shoulder. Continue to breathe into the goodness, our, our own strengths, our gifts. Gratitude for the goodness and the strengths and the gifts that we each have. On the exhale, really feel that release of the upper and the middle back. Gently come back center. Guide both knees now to the left here. Stack the knees and the feet on top of one another. Left hand on top of the right knee and extend that right arm to the side. Gaze over that right shoulder. Good, on the exhale, keep releasing the upper and the middle back. So many benefits for a little lying down spinal twist. Gently come back center. Lightly clasp around the shins one more time and just think about tailbone coming towards the ground and drawing length in the spine on both sides to the right and the left side. And gently, let's roll out of this. Sometimes before I practice, I like to kind of dive into some preparatory postures that make us feel better. And with that, we're going to do a little seated figure four here. So my hands are coming behind me and I'm puffing up my chest a little bit. And this is where I'm going to place the right foot and I awaken that right arch on top of the left knee here, good. And I'm going to draw the right knee forward as I release that outer hip. Let's close those eyes maybe and breathe into this release. Again, awaken that right foot on top of the right knee. The arch is awake. And let's draw that right knee forward. And again, feel that release of the outer right hip. Preparing for our practice today. Movement to take care of us. Gently come out of this pose. Let's place the left foot on top of the right knee here. And I still have those fingertips coming behind here and I'm puffing up the chest a little bit. And this is where I am awakening that left arch and I'm drawing that left knee forward. This is so good to release that outer hip here. Let's close those eyes and just connect to the breath. With the exhale, continue to draw the knee forward just a bit. Breathe into the self-care in this posture. Breathe into your goodness. Own it, cultivate it, shine it. And gently come back, release that left foot here and come up to a little bit more of a seated position here with our legs extended here. We're gonna explore windshield wipers, a little hip mobility. If you want to place the hands to the ground, you can to help you, okay? The hands to the ground. Otherwise, you can keep those arms up like little goal posts. So we're going to drop both knees to the right and come back center. Drop both knees to the left and come back center. 
drop both knees to the right. Beautiful. And come back center. Drop both knees to the left. Good. Come back center. To the right. Come back center. To the left. Beautiful. To the right. And the left. Several more. Drop both knees to the right. Good, hip alignment, hip form to the left, hip health. So good to move those leg bones and move them both outward and inward, externally and internally. Let's do two more. One more. Come back center. Beautiful. This is where we're gonna maybe root and rise without using our hands and knees. If we have to use our hands and knees to help us, that's okay. But maybe follow that momentum here and let's work on rooting and rising. Let's connect to breath and movement. Here we are in Tadasana. Feet are either hip width apart or maybe the feet are together. I like to have my big toes touching, a little wide in the heels. Whatever comes more naturally. And again, if forward folds are a little bit uh, more challenging, widen the feet a little bit to help you. Cultivate Pada Banda. Awaken those arches, spread those toes. It's about roots and extension. Gathering that good energy in all of us. Inhale, draw those arms up. Gaze up and look up. Exhale, swan dive down, heel and toe, heel and toe. Good, a little dynamic lubrication, good. Inhale, halfway lift, either hands to the shins, the thighs, or the ground, or the blocks. Gaze forward and down. Exhale, come into a little forward fold. Hips are over the knees and the ankles. Feel that release in the backside body. Gently bend the knees, swan dive up. Exhale, heart centered. Cultivating that good energy. It's often known as keeping the vibrations high. Inhale, draw both arms up. Gaze up and look up. Exhale, swan dive down a little, heel and toe, heel and toe. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to the shins, thighs, or the ground. It's like a little dance here we're doing with our breath and this movement. Exhale, come into a forward fold. Hips over the knees and the ankles. Feel that release of the backside body. Gently bend the knees, swan dive up. Exhale, heart center. Letting that good energy flow, sharing that flow. It is often known as keeping the vibrations high and sending it out to the world and it coming back to you. Here we are, let's take our strap and let's open up the shoulders just a bit here. So let's even out the strap here. I like to fold mine in half. And maybe keep it a little bit wider than the shoulder width apart. Inhale, I'm drawing that strap over the head. Good. Back and forth. Good. Drawing that strap over, back and forth. I love it. Good. Working on this ball and socket joint of the shoulder girdle, warming it up, a little shoulder mobility. Let's take the strap and hold it right behind you. You can feel the shoulder blades come towards one another. Now draw that strap towards you, almost round that back a little bit, feel the shoulder blades move away. Straighten those arms, shoulder blades come towards one another. Good, yes. Here we go, awesome. There we go. I love it. 
Good. Draw the strap towards you. Feel the shoulder blades move away. Straighten those arms. Feel the shoulder blades come towards one another. Draw that strap over the head. Let's come into a little lateral release here. Draw that strap up. I want you to drop the strap here towards the left. Allow gravity to weigh you down. Shift that right hip to the side. You either can gaze straight ahead or maybe if the neck doesn't bother you, gaze up a little bit, but just feel that release of the right side body. Inhale, exhale through the nose. Incredible, come back up. Whoa, did I feel that. Allow the strap to just kind of weigh you down on the right side body and exaggerate that left hip to the side, opening that left side body either gazing straight ahead or maybe gazing up if the neck doesn't bother you and feel that release of the left side body. Inhale and rise. So beautiful, guys. Let's take this trap in the front, forward and back just several more times. Beautiful. And set the strap down to the side here. Beautiful. So many benefits of these postures today in this flow. This next thing we're going to do, and I want to make sure that you have kind of enough room to the sides here. We're almost going to do a little diagonal expression here. Malasana. Heels in, wider than hip width apart, an inch or two wider than hip width apart, toes out, also known as prayer squat. For some of us, we might want to use this, the block behind, and I'll move that in a bit here because I don't, I don't need one, but the block can help us find that form. Inhale, again, heels in, toes out, wider than hip width apart. Inhale, gather that good energy up. Exhale, gently lower. For some of us, we're sitting onto the block and that helps us find our form. However, we have to adjust the blocks. Just do the best that we can. Good. I like to press those elbows inside the knees and this is where I want to draw length in the spine. Some of you guys kind of round forward, but I want you to find length in the spine. Let's stay here several breaths. This is where I really connect to the prana. On the inhale, I can feel the breath rising from the tailbone throughout the crown of my head. On the exhale, I can feel the breath coming down the spine. Connect to that breath. Open those hips and lengthen the spine. Gently release. We're going to frame this left foot here. And we're going to diagonally take that right leg to the side here, preparing for low lunge. Placing my right knee onto the mat here, hands to the hip. So we have a diagonal low lunge. Inhale, gather that good energy up. Press to the top of the back foot and release the back hip. Draw length in the spine. We'll stay here several breaths. So proud of you guys. Hands to the hips. Hands come back center. Untuck those toes. Back leg is straight. Draw that back foot back up into this malasana, this prayer squat. So many Mobility uh, specialists love this move. God, press those elbows inside the knees. Let's draw length in the spine. Breathe evenly into the right and the left sides. Framing this right foot. 
diagonally taking that left leg behind, placing the knee on top of the ground. Good, hands to those hips. Let's sink lower. Feel those hips almost scissors towards one another as we release the back hip and lengthen the spine. If we can, gaze up and look up. Gently draw the hands to the hips. Untuck those toes. Back leg is straight. Come back into a malasana. Elbows on the inside of the knees. Draw length in the spine. We'll stay here several breaths, connecting to the breath, the prana. Inhale, root and rise. I love it. We're going to take the mat now and go a little bit closer to the wall. We're going to utilize the wall today too. I've been working on the sequence for a few weeks, guys. I, I work hard on these flows and this is one that I've been working on for a few weeks because the postures have so many gifts in them. We're going to explore Sun Salutation B, Surya B. The ancient yogis would start with a chair pose when they're warming up still. We're still kind of warming up. And we're going to take the block. If you have the block, place it high in the upper thighs. And we're going to squeeze the blocks. When we're doing we're, that, we're activating those quadriceps. And here we are squeezing the blocks. The feet are together. On the exhale, we're going to send those sit bones back. Squeeze the blocks and find our way into Utkatasana, fierce pose. Sit nice and low, engage the quadriceps. We're actually strengthening around the knees. Draw length, lift kind of the lower ribs away from the pelvis, but sit nice and low. Engage those quadriceps, engage those glutes, and draw length in the spine. We'll stay here several breaths. Inhale, lengthening, exhale, root into the ground. Inhale, rise. Awesome. Hands, heart center. Let's do a cleansing breath there. Inhale, exhale. Let's explore Utkatasana again. On the exhale, sink nice and low. Send those sit bones back. Draw length in the spine, engage those quadriceps, ignite those glutes, gaze forward or gaze up. Draw the shoulders away from those ears, squeeze that block, fierce pose, utkatasana. Inhale, rise. Now that warms you up. <laughs> Virabhadrasana 1, warrior 1. We're going to go to the block. We're going to go to the wall and utilize the block, I want to say. So this is pretty cool. So we're going to take the block, or if you have another prop, I'm hoping you guys have blocks. Uh, maybe something else. You guys can get creative here. But we're going to take the block kind of to the center of the knee or under the knee, and we're going to energetically Push the block into the wall. The knee is over the ankle and the back foot, the heel is lined with the heel or even a little wider if that helps people. Energetically, we're pressing the block into the wall and you're drawing that right hip forward. Ground through the back heel, ground through the back shin. Warrior one, let's draw those arms up. Energetically, let's feel it. Press that block into the wall, front hip back, back hip forward. We'll stay here several breaths. Continue to ground through that back heel, ground through the back shin. Even feel the inner thigh spiraling back as that right hip comes forward.
Gently draw the hands to the hips to remove the block. Powerful warrior one. This is all about aligning the hips. This pose is so powerful. So we're gonna take the block now with the right knee, kind of under the right knee. And we're gonna enter a heel to heel or maybe a little bit wider if that helps. Energetically press that block into the wall and think front hip back, back hip forward. Ground through the back heel. Send that shin back. Feel the inner thigh spiraling back. It's all about building strength here. Draw those arms up, length in the spine, shoulders away from those ears. Continue to ground through that back heel. Feel that release of the back hip. On the inhale, lengthen. Exhale, root into the ground. Gently release hands to those hips. Good, hands to the blocks. That's a powerful posture. I've been working on that with people lately to help align those hips in warrior one. If you have your blocks, we are going to set them about shoulder width apart. So there's enough room for the sternum and chest to come forward in Chaturanga Dandasana, the forelimb staff pose. Take that right arm and draw the fingers towards you. I want you to draw the, the right hands in dorsiflexion, draw those right three middle fingers and draw them towards you as we kind of awaken our wrists and even open the front of our arms, the biceps. Close those eyes and just feel this release as we're kind of preparing our wrists for some more vigorous things that we're going to kind of work on. Gently release. Take that left arm. Draw those fingers towards you. Good. Close those eyes. little wrist flexibility, little wrist mobility. Gently release. Let's circle those wrists to the right. Good. Circle those wrists to the left. Gently release. Good. Surya A. I'm going to move my blocks up an inch or two more here. Enough room, their shoulder width apart so my sternum and chest can come through. Sun salutation A. Padabandha in the feet, Tadasana. Stand tall. Let the good flow, shine the good. Gather that energy, inhale, arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift. Heel of the hands come on the blocks. Here we are in Adho Mukha Down Dog. Press into the blocks and think about the shoulder blades kind of rooted against the back ribs and the feet are about hip width apart, maybe a little wider. We want to firm those thighs and just breathe into this posture, Adho Mukha. Transition to Felicasana. The hands come to the center of the blocks, engaging the core, doming the upper back, eye of the elbows forward. Good. Draw the belly button to the spine. Either as a modification, you know, you can skip this. You can stay in down dog. You can take a, a wide-legged child's pose. You can lower to the knees in Chaturanga. Or we're going to bend those arms at the elbows and draw the sternum and the chest forward. Gaze forward, shoulder in line with those elbows. Engage the core. Chaturanga Dandasana. Now upward facing dog. Press through the tops of the feet. Pelvis comes forward. 
and kind of weighs you down as we draw length in the spine, opening the chest, opening the heart. This is a back bend and arm balance. Gaze up, look up. Feel those inner thighs spiraling back. Exhale, come over the tops of the feet. Find your way back into down dog. Heel of the hands on the blocks. Feel the tailbone come back and down, pubis bone back and up. Find the breath, inhale, exhale through the nose. Gently release slower to the knees. Let's take a wide-legged child's pose. Big toes touching, widen the knees here. Hands come onto the blocks, if we have the blocks. Forehead to the ground, maybe chin towards the chest and just draw length into the spine and send those hips, the glutes, the, towards the heels. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, deepen this pose. Beautiful wide-legged child's pose. Enjoy the many benefits. Good. Gently come up. We are going to, we're on our knees. We're gonna adjust ourselves for some core work today. Here's where the challenge begins. Let's take the blocks and bring them outside of the hips. We'll use them in just a bit. Let's explore Navasana boat pose. So we're balancing the back of the sitting bones, maybe bending the legs here, keeping the legs parallel to the ground for many of us as we strengthen the hip flexors. And for those that can straighten those legs and straighten those arms, opening the chest, draw in length in the spine here as we strengthen those hip flexors. Good. Gently cross the legs. I have my left in front of the right here. And I'm going to, this is known as easy sukhasana. I'm going to, easy, easy sukhasana with a core lift. I'm going to press into those blocks and I'm going to engage the core and draw the feet off the ground. Real deep core exercise. Good. Now I'm going to adjust those feet back a little transition there. Good. My feet are together, my blo the blocks are outside the knees. And I'm, this is known as low loss in a prep. I'm gonna push into the blocks and draw my knees towards the chest as I round that back. Good, push into the blocks, engage the core to draw the knees towards the chest, good. Awesome. Two more. Gently release. Let's work the core a little bit. Again, following the cycle again. I take the blocks outside of the hips here. My fingertips are really on the ground here. Finding the balance of the back of my sitting bones, either legs bent for beginners, Eventually straighten those legs, straighten those arms, energy out the fingertips, energy out the toes, really strengthens the hip flexors. Crossing the right over the left, push into the blocks, engage the core to draw the feet off the ground. Good. Draw the feet behind you. Blocks now are outside of my knees here. And the feet are in plantar flexion. 
I'm pushing into the blocks and drawing my knees towards my chest. Good. Good, let's do five more. Awesome, gently release. Challenging core exercises. The core, sometimes when we really warm it up like this, we might be preparing for some arm balance is coming up too, okay? So here we are. Let us, uh, let's explore toe squat. Ankles, knees and shins are together here. And we're gonna sit back on those heels. We're sending just a little bit of love to those toes. Those toes that we shove in the shoes. So we're, we're even this out between our pinky to our big toe and just kind of coming into a little toe mobility there, increasing circulation, is giving those toes some love. Let's stay here several breaths. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. Let's kind of stand on the knees here. Let's do a little ankle and kind of some toe mobility. So we're going to rock forward and back if we need to use the hands to help us. But let's work on this transition one more where we're going to roll over onto those ankles and stand up. Great job, you guys. Awesome. I love it. So we awakened the core there. <laughs> And now let's explore a little Bakasana pose, crane pose. So if some of you want to utilize the block to help you, I'm going to put it towards the edge of my mat there and kind of play around. The block, sometimes people like to put the forehead on the block as they're working on the core to lift and come up into this arm balance. The journey is more important than the end and I simply want you to have fun with this and honor where you are in safety. So I'm gonna start with my ankles, knees, and shins together. Inhale, draw those arms up. Cultivate the good inside of you. Keep those vibrations high. Exhale, swan dive down, hands under the shoulders, good. We're going to releve, we're releving up here, you know, on the, on the balls of the feet, and we're going to widen those knees. And we're going to place those knees up high under the armpits or the shoulders. Good. That We're going to stop those elbows from winging out, keeping them close to you. Good. Maybe the block comes onto the forehead, but we're drawing the heels towards the buttocks as we explore this Bakasana. Good. Gently release. Swan dive up. Exhale, heart centered. That was fun. Maybe we'll do it again. <laughs> I love it. Let's come to the, to the wall here. Let's, let's explore a little extended angle. The wall is beautiful. It allows us to explore alignment and form. We're, let's start, I've got my right leg here in front. Let's start the right knee towards that, you know, right over the ankle towards that right pinky toe. We are about one leg length, okay? So it's a little bit longer than triangle. Let's take the blocks either lower or higher if that helps us come into the pose. But here we are, Virabhadrasana 2. We're actually in Warrior 2. Right knee towards that pinky toe. We're feeling that right hip opening. Good. Draw length in the spine. This is strength in itself. Now we're going to explore Uttita Parjvakanasana extended angle. 
Draw the elbow and shoulder inside the knee. Have a little bit of room for the torso. For some of you, you might be here today, six o'clock arms. And for some of you, you're gonna grow the pose from the back foot through the hips. Take the arm kind of in line over the head, armpit towards the ear, pinky towards the face, and grow this pose. Really think about the heart coming towards the sky. Inhale and rise, Virabhadrasana two. Good. Let's adjust ourselves, beautiful. This extended angle is known, ancient yogis used to say that this was known for releasing arthritis, helping with arthritis, helping with pain. It's really a powerful posture and my body always feels better when I practice this. So now we're gonna work the left side. I've got my right foot against the wall. Heel intersects with the back heel or the back arch. Knee comes towards that pinky toe. The block comes on the inside. Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Knee towards that pinky toe, good. Sink in a little bit lower. You can feel that leg getting stronger and even that left hip beginning to kind of open a bit. On the exhale, beginning version of extended and angle. Good, you have a little bit of room between the torso and the thigh there. Elbow or shoulder comes inside the left knee, six o'clock arms. For many of us, we stay here. And for some of us, we grow this pose. From the back foot, externally rotate that top arm. Good, through the hips, through the crown of the head and the fingertips. Allow the elbow and shoulder to, inside that knee to help you draw the heart towards the sky. Inhale and rise. Gently transition, place the hands on the hips, maybe come out of that pose. So fun. So just where we are, good. Bakasana again, crow pose. If some of you want to use the block under the forehead, let's work on that. I also want to say the hand, the fingers are spreads. They're like talons into the ground here. This is strengthening the core and it's strengthening the upper back here. Inhale, draw those arms up. Draw length in the spine. Exhale, we're gonna swan dive down. Hands under the shoulders. Spread those fingers, maybe they act like talons. We're gonna widen those knees, good. And the journey more important than the end, even just little partial crow. Good, placing the knees under the shoulders, good, or up high in the triceps. For some of you, you might try one foot at a time. One foot at a time till you build the balance. Heels towards the buttocks. Keep those elbows from winging out. Sternum and chest comes forward. Engage the core to lift those hips. Gently release. Swan dive up. Draw. Good. Gaze up, look up. Exhale, heart centered. We're going to place the blocks outside of the mat here. Because now we're going to kind of counter extended angle with reverse crescent moon. So we're going to really work on leveraging the rotation of the torso. This is a powerful posture. And we're also internally gonna rotate that back leg. So we're just kind of taking care of the body here and exploring. So I have the blocks on either side in case I wanted to use those. And we're gonna try to make this posture accessible for all. 
Inhale, draw that energy up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift. On the exhale, we're framing the feet. We're walking those legs back into Adho Mukha Down Dog. Good. Again, let's firm those thighs. Press them back and up. Mindfully draw the left knee, the chest, and the nose. We're going to place the left foot next to the left hand. Here we are, runner's pose. Lower the right knee towards the ground. Here we come. Hands to those hips. Low lunge. Beautiful. Hands to those hips. Let's frame the foot. Draw that back knee under the hip. Tuck that back toe. Good. Left hand on the hip. Draw that right arm up. Inhale, lengthen. On the exhale, we're trying to get the elbow and shoulder outside of the knee, and that's a challenge for some of us. Eventually, we can get into a prayer twist. Elbow and shoulder outside the knee. And eventually, we can straighten that back leg. We want to come more to the pinky toe side. Good. So the back right leg is internally rotating. We can keep the hands in the prayer twist. Or some of us might take the hands. You might adjust the block here. Or to the ground, grow the pose from the back foot through the hips, through the crown of the head and the fingertips. Think of the heart coming towards the sky. Good. Left hand of the hip. Come back into standing crescent moon. Good. And with that, good. We're just building strength. Front leg parallel to the ground. Back leg straight and engaged. Let's gaze forward. Hands to the hips. Frame the foot. Find our way back into down dog. Let's do a cleansing breath here. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Breathe into that goodness in each one of you. And how you can share that goodness off of the mat. Transition, draw the right knee to the chest and the nose, round that upper back. Place the right foot next to the right hand. Here we are in a runner's pose, back leg straight and engaged. Gently lowering the left knee to the ground, hands to the hips. Find our way into beautiful low lunge. Hands to the hips, frame that foot, draw that back knee under the hip, tuck the back toes, good. Have the right hand on the hip, draw that left arm up as we begin to revolve this torso, placing the left elbow outside of the right knee, and maybe coming into this prayer twist if we can. Eventually straightening that back leg, coming more to the pinky toe side of the back leg. And maybe we grow the pose. This is a challenge, I know. Many of us just stay here, even keep the knee on the ground. But some of us grow the pose, placing the left hand of the block or the ground, and growing the pose, revolving the torso. Heart towards the sky. Coming out of this pose, right hand on the hip. 
I mean, nice and strong. Standing crescent moon. Good, building strength. Releasing hands to those hips. Frame the foot, find our way back into down dog, cleansing breath together. Inhale, exhale. Stay here, several breaths, firm those thighs, heels in line with the pinky toe, toes and feel those inner thighs spiraling back. Let's find a vinyasa, come into the plank. Bend those arms, draw the sternum and the chest forward, shoulders in line with those elbows. Upward facing dog, press through the tops of the feet. Gaze up, look up. Exhale, come over the tops of the feet. Find your way into Adho Mukha, down dog. Walk the hands backwards. Come into a forward fold. Gently bend the knees, swan dive up. Good. I've taken us to the backs of our mats and we have our wall nearby. Good. This is where we're going to explore Anumanasana on the wall. Just do you the best that you can do. Good. But what a great posture this is. Okay, so for many of us, we're going to start three, four feet off the wall, and we're just going to do the best that we can. We're going to utilize the wall for this amazing posture. This posture works really well for beginners on the wall. Inhale, gather that energy up. Upward salute. Exhale, swan dive down. Good. And this is what we're going to kind of, let's start with the left leg first. And we're going to kind of frame this left foot so the left is our standing leg. And we're going to draw that right leg to the wall. The toes are pointed down. And we might do a dynamic exploration where we come closer to the wall and back. And we're gonna do this several breaths. Some of you might be even farther away, another two feet forward, because this is such a challenge. Wherever you are, I'm cheering you on and just do you good. Now, some of you might wanna deepen this pose. So you're gonna walk the feet back a little bit more. Maybe we've practiced this posture several times and you're hyper flexible and you can even get those feet closer. I like to go a few inches away from the wall and then take that foot and almost make it flat against the wall, eventually drawing my elbows towards the wall, my hands out of the inner and outer ankle, and we're gonna stay here several breaths. Gently release, lower that right leg, come out of this pose, swan dive up, hands heart center, cleansing breath, inhale, exhale, here we are off the wall, maybe three, four feet for some of us, maybe five feet, inhale, gather that energy up. Exhale, swan dive down. So we're going to kind of frame that right foot a bit. And we're drawing this left leg up, toes pointed down. Good. And let's, as we frame this foot, dynamically explore coming closer to the wall and back. Closer to the wall and back. Good. And after a while, some of you, you know, 
you're very, a few are very flexible and you want to work on getting closer to the wall. I can't even tell you what you might be able to do with consistency in your yoga practice. Practicing several days a week, maybe taking yoga teacher training. This is now where my foot comes flat against the wall. I'm a few inches away from the wall. My elbow's close to the wall. I'm clasping around the inner and outer ankle. We'll still stay here several breaths. Gently releasing, lowering that leg. Good. Swan dive up. Exhale, heart centered. Beautiful. We're going to do a few drop backs on the wall. The body is warm and we are ready. The drop backs are amazing because we're strengthening the spine. We're opening the chest and the wall and we're truly challenging ourselves we're honoring where we are in the standing drop backs the feet can be wide enough maybe even hip width apart we're going to rotate those big toes in slightly okay good here we are we're going to draw length in the spine inhale lengthen exhale Push into the wall, and we're going to come back up, neck and head last. These are often referred to as our kind of standing drop backs. And we can get closer to the wall if that makes us less nervous. You know, a soft arm distance or even closer if that makes us less nervous. So honor where you are. But just know when we're compressing the spine, we're strengthening the muscles around the spine, and we're using the wall to push and open the chest and the heart. So here we are, feet wide, a little bit wider than hip width apart. Rotate those big toes in slightly. Inhale, we're going to create length. Let's gaze up and lead with the hands and the head. Push against the wall. Open the chest. Open the heart. And come back up neck and head, last hands, heart center. This is where some of you might even come forward just a bit and ex practice walking back on that wall a little bit to strengthen the spine. Draw those arms up, gaze up, look up. Lead with the hands and the head. Begin to walk the hands back, push those hips forward. Open the chest, open the heart. Neck and head last. Awesome. We're going to do two more of these. These are so good for you. Honoring where you are. If you need to come out of this, this uh, practice right now and just take a break for a few seconds, you can. Gather that energy up. Lead with the hands and the head. Walk those hands back. Open the chest, open the heart, hips pressing forward. Walk it back up, neck and head last. Let's do one more. Amazing drop backs on the wall. Gaze up and look up. Walk those hands down maybe a few inches. Push against the wall. Open the chest, open the heart. Walk those hands up, neck and head last. Hands by the heart. Beautiful. We're going to finish with a few seated postures. But first, let's 
Let's neutralize the spine just a bit. So let's draw those arms up. And I want you to think about tucking that tailbone in slightly as I came into the side view of here. So draw the belly button in, posteriorly tilting that pelvis and help us kind of neutralize the spine after those back bends. Posteriorly tilt, belly button the spine, gaze up, look up. Hands by the heart. Good. We're going to come into a little seated expressions of forward folds. Dandasana. In Dandasana, we sit nice and tall. If you have a, a little bit of a hard time where you slump, this is where sometimes taking a pillow or a blanket and even placing that under the sitting bones gives you, or a smaller block, gives you a little bit of a lift and helps you kind of anteriorly rotate that pelvis forward a bit. So if you have a hard time sitting nice and tall anatomically, that could be just the way our bones are designed, give yourself a little bit of a lift, okay? And let's explore head of the knee pose. So here we are sitting in Dandasana. We're gonna widen the feet, maybe an inch or so wider than hip width apart. I'm gonna mirror you here. You're gonna keep that left leg extended and you're going to draw the right heel up high near the pubis bone inside this left thigh. We're gonna take the outer edge of this left extended leg and draw it towards you. If some of you have a hard time coming forward, you can simply hold on to the strap and breathe into this. Head of the knee is both a hamstring and a hip opener. So we're opening up those hamstrings and opening the hips. The goal is to get the sternum and the chest over the shin. I like to take a block here because I'm a little more flexible and also keep that, that left foot in dorsiflexion. So either holding the strap or drawing the arms over the head, we're going to shift that sternum and the chest over that left shin. I don't want to collapse the chest. I want to keep the sternum and the chest forward. Breathe into that release of the hamstrings and opening those hips. We'll stay here several breaths. reaping the many benefits. This posture helps alleviate back pain, opening the hamstrings and opening those hips. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, deep in this pose. Continue to draw the sternum and the chest over that shin. And also take the pelvic hip bowl of that bent leg and draw it forward. Inhale and rise. Come back to Dandasana. Let's take the feet about an inch or so wider than a hip width apart. Keep that right leg extended and straight and draw that left heel as, as I mirror you. Place it high near the pubis bone in the upper thigh here. Good. For many of us, you're going to have to use maybe a strap to help us come forward. And for some of us, I like to take the block outside of the knee. It's all about drawing the sternum and the chest forward, but I also want you to think of that pelvic hip bowl coming forward as we lengthen those hamstrings and open the hips and release that lower back. Inhale, gather that good energy up. Exhale, come forward. Good, let's draw sternum and chest outside 
or forward here on the shin. Good. Sternum and the chest continue to come forward. Good. Over that shin and draw that pelvic hip bowl of the bent left leg forward. Breathe into this release. Deeper exhales and inhale. We'll stay here several breaths. Inhale and rise. I love it. Come back into Dandasana. Revolved head of the knee pose. For Parvita Janu Shershasana. Here we are, revolved head of the knee. We're going to take those legs straddle. We're going to keep this left leg extended. And we're going to draw this right heel. We're going to place it high on the upper thigh here of the left leg near the pubis bone. And we want to keep a little awakening of the arch, a little dorsiflexion of that left leg. This is all, the why behind this pose is we're releasing especially the QLs, the lateral stabilizers. So this helps with back pain. Because we're going to draw the heart towards the sky. That's why this is known as the revolve pose. So we're going to start with, for many of us, the left uh, fingertips towards the ground. Maybe this kind of six o'clock arms. Eventually, elbow and shoulder come inside that left knee. The arm comes over the head. We clasp outer edge of this left foot. We take the left hand inside that inner arch and we think about leveraging the heart towards the sky and really releasing as I mirror you here, your right side body. Inhale and rise. Yoga is the science of healthy living in this Posture demonstrates that. Let's, let's come into the straddle here. Go ahead, adjust ourselves. Right leg is extended as I mirror you here. Draw that, that left heel kind of near the pubis bone inside the upper thigh here. And let's think about this revolved expression on the other side. So we're going to start with the right fingertips and we just have this left arm up and maybe for here this is where we are. Eventually elbow and shoulder comes inside the knee and the arms and that left arm over the head. Eventually the left arm outside of the right outer edge of the foot, the right hand inside as we revolve this heart towards the sky. The magical posture. Inhale and rise. And again, so good for releasing the lateral stabilizers. The quadratus lumborum of the spine. Coming back into Dandasana, seated staff pose. Root through those sitting bones, draw length. Let's explore Paschimottasana. For some of us, we're going to utilize the strap and just hold here, engaging the quadriceps to release those hamstrings. For some of us, we're gonna take a block. We've got some flexibility. We're gonna come in a little bit deeper. For myself, I like to use two blocks. Rooting through those sitting bones, gathering that energy up. Inhale, create length. Exhale, come forward two inches, three inches, 
four inches, maybe six inches farther than you think you can go. Try not to collapse the chest. Breathe into this release of the backside body. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen this pose. We're going to stay here a while, cultivating the many benefits of flexibility. Maybe we relax our way into the pose a few more breaths. That's okay. Just relax, let go. Inhale and rise. Hands heart centered. Let's finish with Viparidi Karani on the wall. Legs up the wall, active reversal pose. So we're gonna come to the side of the wall. And if some of us have a harder time, you know, getting the legs against the wall, we can use a little pillow against the lower back and the hips to help us, okay? So that's always an example, but we're gonna come to the side as we explore this little active reversal pose, legs up the wall. This is a healing pose here. The legs are together. We're lightly awaking the arches. We relax the palms. We open those palms, good. Let's kind of Broaden the collarbones here and kind of open up the shoulders a little bit and just come into this pose here. Good. The spine is neutral. The sitting bones against the wall here. Active arches allowing gravity and this magical posture just to kind of work its wonders as we'll sit here towards the end of our practices in this beautiful posture, active reversal pose. We'll let everything go, allowing again the goodness that we started off just to kind of circulate within us and to carry it with us today. As we shine the goodness with our smiles, our actions, You're going to stay in this Viparati Karani, Viparati Karani pose for a few minutes or as long as you like, reaping the many benefits of this practice as you go out to share the light and be the light. Namaste. Namaste.